This is Malik the Hook from the University of Colorado, and the topic today is neovascular glaucoma in this edition of One Slide in Five Minutes. Neovascular glaucoma, or NVG, presents as a secondary open angle or secondary closed angle glaucoma, depending on the extent of fibrovascularization and synechia formation in the drainage angle. The abnormal vessels form in response to ischemia of the retina and are composed of highly permeable thin walls lacking a muscular layer or normal adventitia with absence of tight intercellular junctions. Aqueous outflow is compromised by the fibrovascularization with or without synechia formation. Retinal ischemia is the common denominator leading to neovascularization of the iris or NVI and neovascularization of the angle or NVA and eventually NVG and can be associated with diabetes, retinal vascular occlusive disease like central retinal vein occlusion or branch retinal vein occlusion, tumors, ocular or periocular radiation, uveitic diseases, and iatrogenic or surgical causes. Diagnosis of NVG is based on clinical examination and can be assisted by fluorescein angiography. The first sign of new vessel growth in the anterior segment is leakage of intravenously injected fluorescein dye from vessels at the pupillary margin. This is the pre-rubiosa stage as NVI and NVA are not yet detectable. When vascular proliferation occurs, signifying transition to the rubiosus phase, it is observable by slit lamp biomicroscopy, typically at the pupillary margin. When NVI is observed, careful gonioscopy is necessary to identify any NVA and to quantify any existing fibrovascular membranes or peripheral anterior synechia. In fact, any patient at risk of developing NVG should undergo periodic inspection of the anterior chamber angle by gonioscopy, since findings in the angle might precede slit lamp findings on the pupillary margin or iris stroma, as can be the case especially in patients with dark irides. NVI can be associated with ectropian UVA, which is the presence of iris pigment epithelium on the anterior surface of the iris in later stages. As vessels proliferate in the angle, arborizing over the ciliary body and scleral spur and spreading over the trabecular meshwork, progressive elevation in IOP can be noted related to a decrease in outflow facility. The very fine vascular formations in neovascular glaucoma, in this case NVI, can be seen on the surface of the iris extending from the pupillary margin and around the entire pupil as well as onto the iris stroma. A closer look shows you the arborizing formation, basically tree branch formation of these vessels that you can see in both the iris stroma as well as in the drainage angle utilizing gonioscopy. NVA typically occurs first at the base of the iris, taking the form of individual vascular trunks that cross the ciliary body and scleral spur and over the corneoscleral trabecular meshwork. Eventually, a fibrovascular membrane forms that is contractile and produces localized anterior synechia with progressive zipping of the angle as the disease progresses. The differential diagnosis includes acute or chronic uveitis, acute or chronic angle closure, ocular tumors, iatrogenic pauses, and trauma. Anterior segment neovascularization can occur without retinal ischemia, as is the case with pseudoxfoliation syndrome, isolated iris melanomas, Fuchs heterochromic uveitis, and other types of uveitis. Topical and oral IOP lowering medications are temporizing measures, and surgery is almost always required since presentation is often at stages where the IOP is elevated and the drainage angle is compromised with significant zipping of the aqueous outflow system. Anti-VEGF agents should be injected into the vitreous cavity or anterior chamber, and scheduling of surgery to reduce IOP typically involves prompt placement of a glaucoma drainage device. The anti-VEGF agents can cause reversal of neovascularization and decrease the chance for intraoperative bleeding from friable vessels, along with decreasing the pro-inflammatory angiogenic drive. The glaucoma drainage device of choice is typically the AMED valve, the FP7 model, since IOP is usually extremely elevated and prompt lowering of pressure is needed. Trabeculectomy surgery has a very high failure rate in these eyes and is not considered standard of care. Novel devices such as MIGS implants or goniotomy are not appropriate in these eyes due to angle pathology. Finally, cyclophotocoagulation can be utilized but can lead to significant morbidity and hypotony given the variable aqueous inflow and outflow compromise in neovascular glaucoma. The transcript for this talk can be found at keogt.com. This talk and many other educational videos can be found on this YouTube channel as well as on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for your time.